What if our policy response needs to be monetary policy? Well, if we know it's going to be monetary policy and we're in an expansion, we know this is going to be contractionary, right? Contractionary monetary policy, meaning that my R bar is going to increase. Increase in R bar is going to make consumption, investment, net exports, all of those decline, which will then shift my aggregate demand curve back to the left. Uh, just as a reminder for, you know, quizzes, exams, right? We have old tools that can make the interest rates go up. And we also have the new tools. So make sure you go back and revisit all of that. So what is this going to do to our market? Well, we know that that's going to cause aggregate demand to go back to A. So it's always good to start with aggregate demand, aggregate supply. If we do that, we know this is going to be aggregate demand C, and so point A is going to equal point C. This is going to close the output gap and close the inflation gap both at the exact same time. This is the divine coincidence which we've read about during the lesson. This is going to tell us then, right, if this is our new output, if I go up here, that's going to tell us point C on my IS curve. So now we know the exact amount that we have to increase the real interest by because I know that the inflation gap has closed as well. So for my MP curve, I now know what the rate of interest is and the rate of inflation is so I can get my single point to then create my MP curve exactly where it needs to be so everything lines up. So we have an upward shift in the MP curve, right? And that's because I'm going to increase my R bar. The IS curve is staying the same, but we're seeing it move up and to the left because of that higher interest rate. And this aggregate demand curve is shifting back and we are closing both the output gap and the inflation gap. And this is how monetary policy can be used to help correct an expansionary period.